Hello, welcome back to the A to Z of archaeology. Today is the letter K, and I don't mind telling you, it was a bit of a struggle when I had to try and think of an archaeological principle beginning with K. I began at the beginning in an effort to try and find something beginning with K. I must admit the search was long and hard, and yes, I did occasionally become distracted. After even more arduous searching, I even began to think that this task would be impossible. However, when I was just about to give up, the idea finally came to me. A moment of inspiration. However, I did finally come up with something, remarkably, and that was potassium argon dating. Now, I can hear some of you already wondering, what has that got to do with K? Well, it's got to do with K because the chemical symbol for potassium is K or at the very least, according to my fridge magnet, it is. So, potassium argon dating is actually very similar to carbon dating, in as much as it takes advantage of the, uh, the change from an unstable element to a more stable element. The principle of potassium argon dating is very similar to that which we saw when we examined carbon dating, in as much as it takes advantage of radioactive decay the change of an often unstable element to a more stable and sometimes completely different element. In this instance, the radioactive element which we are utilising is the, the unstable version of potassium, potassium-40, and its decay into the more stable gas, argon-40. Potassium-40's half-life is 1.3 billion years. Often, potassium-40 is erupted from volcanoes and is part of the pyroclastic material that is sent up into the atmosphere. It then cools and forms igneous rocks. And, bit by bit, within those rocks, the gas of argon forms through radioactive decay. Knowing the half-life of potassium-40, we can then measure the argon gas in the rocks using a mass spectrometer and estimate the date when the rock was formed. The more argon gas present, the older the rock sample. In this way, the layer of volcanic material can be dated, and if archaeology is between two layers of volcanic material, we know that it must have been laid down between those two dates. Thankfully, much of the archaeology for early human beings is in areas which have been extremely volcanically active, and therefore these sandwiches often occur. So the great thing about this dating method is its scope. The amount of time that it covers is incredibly useful to archaeologists. The scope of potassium argon dating is between 5 million and 100,000 years ago, and this covers major events in our evolution. 5 million years ago, Ardipithecus ramidus was the first of our ancestors to walk upright. The different variations of the Australopithecines existed on this planet between 4 and 2 million years ago. Variations of the Paranthropus were in existence between 2 and 1 million years ago. Similarly, variations of the Kenyanthropus were in existence between 3.5 and 2 million years ago. But it is the Australopithecines to which we return, because it is from their line that we believe the first toolmakers came, and some of these were called Homo habilis, or the handyman. From then on, tool-making was a signature of the hominins, and between 1.8 million and 200,000 years ago, Homo erectus and Homo ergaster were the masters of tool-making. It is around this time that we see the rise of Homo neanderthalensis, or the Neanderthals, and their sister species, us, Homo sapiens, human beings. And what a handsome example this is. So, potassium argon dating uh, covers most of the time um, that, human be that human beings have been on this planet, or pre-human beings have been on this planet. And therefore, archaeologists can use it to try and pinpoint um, when certain sites uh, were in the past. Um, there is a disadvantage, and that is that you do need to have um, hot volcanic material at the zero point. Uh, and this obviously can sometimes be a little bit dangerous for archaeology, and um, the material that we're, we're tr hoping will be preserved. But thankfully, some of the earliest human sites in history um, are actually in some of the most volcanic areas of the world, uh, or were at the time. For example, the Olduvai Gorge um, in, in East Africa um, has quite literally sandwiches of, uh, 
of uh, volcanic material. So you'll have uh, volcanic ash, a, uh, an occupation layer, and then more volcanic ash. So in that way, we've been extremely fortunate, and, uh, and thankfully, um, we're able to, 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 not as accurately as carbon dating, but we're able to try and dip, um, pinpoint to, to a vague uh, point in time when these sites were. And you know, when we're talking about 200,000 years to 5 million years, that anything you can do is, is good. <laughs> so, that's been potassium argon dating. Hopefully you found this video useful and or interesting. Feel free to comment below uh, if you have or haven't, in fact. Mm. If you have any questions, all you need to do is message me and I shall get back to you as soon as I can. Um, we do actually now have a Facebook page. All you need to do is search for Archeosoup Productions on Facebook and you'll find the page. And often, things that I can't fit into videos uh, on the channel make it onto the Facebook page. Uh, and also, yes, that's it please do feel free to subscribe and then you can never escape well you can escape and you can unsubscribe but you know you get the gist so thank you very much